In this video, we're going over how to use the TCL Stylus 5G for beginners. Welcome back to another video. I'm your tech guy, Wayne. Today I'll be covering how to use the TCL Stylus 5G for beginners. In this video, I'll be covering the following topics. A walkthrough of navigating the phone, the interior and exterior, so all the buttons, how to download applications, how to control the volume, how to make a call, how to send text messages, how to set up your email, and finally, how to take pictures. So that's what you can expect to learn from the video. If you find any section of the video helpful, please make sure you hit that thumbs up button down below. If you're not already a subscriber, hit that subscribe button. Let's go ahead and jump right in and get started. So first, we're gonna go over just a tour of the exterior of the phone. So on the left side, there are no buttons, but you will find a SIM card slot here. And this is where your SIM card goes, which has your service connected to it, and also where you'll be inserting the micro SD card in the event you have external storage you wanna use with the phone. On the right side of the phone, you'll find a volume up, volume down button, and a power button right here. And then on the bottom of the phone, you will find the charging port, which is a type C charging type. You'll find an auxiliary port to plug in your headphones. And you'll also find the stylus port, which is where you have a built-in pin that you can use to navigate the screen. And at the top, nothing there. And let's get into the phone. So, when we tap the power button, it will wake up the phone from being asleep. So again, uh, tapping power will put the phone asleep or put it in the sleep mode. And then tapping it again will wake up the phone. And then to get into the phone, you'll just take your finger, put it on the screen, and you'll drag it up. And that's how you sign into or log into the phone, okay? Right now, there is no password on the phone. You can go into the settings and you can set a pin code or a passcode if you would like to lock it. And in the event that you do that, if you were to swipe on the home screen, it will ask you to put in a code before you can actually get into the phone, okay? Now, let's talk about the buttons you'll see on the screen. You'll have three buttons at the bottom, a back button, a home button, and a recent apps button. Now let's walk through what each one does individually, starting with the home button. So whenever you tap on one of these little icons, these are known as apps. Apps is short for applications. Think of it like a computer. Computers have programs. Phones have applications or apps for short. So if you tap on one of these apps, for example, this app here is the app that takes you to the internet. Tapping on this will take you to Google and allow you to then search for whatever you want. I can tap in the search box here and the keyboard will come up and I can begin searching for a specific website. Maybe you wanna to get to AOL because you like to read the news articles on AOL. You type in AOL.com, hit the home button, or excuse me, the arrow, and that'll take you to that website. Now when you're all done, and you wanna get back to the home screen, what you'll need to do is tap on the home button, which is right here in the center. Tapping that will take you back to the home screen, okay? Now, whatever you're doing on the phone, tapping this button will take you back to this screen, which is considered the home screen. Now, the button to the right is called the recent apps button. And just as an example, we opened up this app here, which is the Chrome app or our web browser, now guess what, we tapped on this and we searched a website and then we hit the home button and went back to the home screen. Well guess what, that app is still running in the background of the phone. And if I wanna go back to it, all I have to do is tap on this button here, which is the recent apps button, and it will show me the last app I was using and I can also swipe through to look at other apps I was just previously using to easily get back to them just by hitting a button and tapping. So if I wanna to go to Chrome, I'm gonna tap right here, and that will take me right into the Chrome app. So that is what the recent apps button does. It allows you, by tapping it, to see what apps are running on the phone, and 
Let's say you are finished using the web browser or Chrome and you'd like to close out this app. All you have to do is swipe up and that will close out that application or app for short. And I could just simply swipe up and close all of these apps that are running in the background. Because one thing to note, when apps are running in the background, it does slow down the phone over time. So if you're finished using something, it is a good rule of thumb to close it. So that's what the recent apps button does. Our last button on the left here, this is your home button, or excuse me, this is your back button. It takes you back one step. Now to show you a good example of this, we're gonna go to the settings app and I'm gonna go to advanced features. I'm just gonna select anything. And then I'm gonna go to one-handed mode. So I've just gone a few options deep into the menu. I'd like to go back one page. To do that, I will be tapping on the back button to take me back one page. And if I tap it again, it'll take me back another page. Now I'm on the home screen of the settings menu. And at this point, if I tap the back button again, it will take me out of the app and back to the home screen, just like this. So that is all that the back button does. It just takes you back one step. So those are the three main buttons you'll be using to navigate the phone. Next, we'll be going over uh, what is called the notification panel. This is another section of the phone where you will find important messages will come through the phone. So what you're gonna do to get there is very easy. You're going to swipe down from the top of the screen, take your finger, bring it to the top of the screen and just simply drag it down and that will take you to your notification panel. In this section, you'll find two things. You'll find what are called switches. These are shortcuts to different menu settings, probably the most frequently used menu settings. So those shortcuts will be up there. And down here, you'll find notifications. Now, these notifications uh, are tied to the different apps that are on your phone. Um, they also have to do with different, different things happening on the phone. So right now, my battery is at 14% and the phone is telling me, hey, your battery is low. I can tap here where it says turn on battery saver and guess what? That'll put my phone into a setting that will help me to save some battery to keep the phone on longer until I get to a charger. So that's just an example of one notification. Now guess what? If I don't wanna see this anymore, I can just simply swipe. So I'm putting my finger on the screen and just dragging it to the right. And that is going to take us, basically get rid of that notification. That's what that does. And let's say someone sends you a text message it would show up in this section. Let's say you had a phone call, a missed phone call, it would show up in this section and you could simply swipe it away or you can tap on the notification if you'd like to go into it and get more information, okay? Now, let's go over these switches at the top of the screen here. So these switches, again, they tie to the most frequently used options in the settings and let me go over some of the options you'll see. So first we have here a Wi-Fi switch. Now, what is Wi-Fi? Guess what? You wanna to connect to your home internet or you're at a friend's house or you're at a restaurant or a Starbucks and they have free Wi-Fi, guess what? I would need to simply turn on my Wi-Fi by tapping on that button. If it's lit up blue, that means it's on. If it's not blue, like the Bluetooth here, then that means that it's off. So just by tapping it, it automatically turned on my Wi-Fi. Now, if I wanna to connect to a Wi-Fi network, I'm gonna take my finger and I'm gonna hold down for one second. That'll take us to the Wi-Fi menu. And here I can see all the available networks I can connect to. So if you were at a Starbucks, you would be looking for the network that says Starbucks. Or if you're at a friend's house, you would simply say, hey, what's the name of your Wi-Fi so I can connect to the right one? You would then tap on it, and then you would need to enter whatever the password is, and then this connect button would light up, and you would be able to connect to that network. So that is just a little rundown of the Wi-Fi option, and basically I just showed you how to connect to Wi-Fi. So make sure you make a note if you didn't know how to do that before. Okay, let's swipe down again. We have a few other options here. We have a Bluetooth option. Maybe you have a Bluetooth speaker or Bluetooth headphones you'd like to connect. You would simply hold down 
on the Bluetooth button, it will take you to the same menu. And here I can simply turn it on first. Now it says it's on. And it would now show me a list of all the available um, Bluetooth devices that I could connect to. You'll then need to take your Bluetooth device and make sure it is in the pairing mode so that the phone can see it and connect to it. Okay. All right. And just to show you as you swipe left, or excuse me, you can swipe down to see more options. So for example, airplane mode, do not disturb dark mode. You have all these other options and we can swipe to the left and there's even more options here. So this is just, again, different settings um, that most people tend to use the most. For those of you that know where the hotspot is, guess what? You can use this toggle switch to turn on your hotspot and uh, allow your phone to share the internet with your other devices. For example, a laptop or a tablet. So that is the notification panel in a nutshell. Let's move on to apps. Let's talk about where do you find your apps and how to download new applications. So first things first, again, we're on the home screen. Now, just to show you as I swipe left and right, you'll see a couple of these little apps here. Now, these bubbles where you see multiple apps, these are folders. So for example, that's the Google folder and it has lots of options in it. You have a TCL folder, a T-Mobile folder, so you'll find a few apps on the home screen, but I guarantee you there are more apps on the phone. To get to that, you'll simply need to swipe up, and this will take you to what is called the app drawer. The app drawer is where you'll find all of the apps that are installed on the phone. So you'll see a lot more apps here than we saw on the home screen. But what if I want to download a new app that is not currently on the phone? Well, what you'll need to do is go to the Play Store right here. And the Play Store is where you'll go to download games, apps, and books. Those are the things you'll find in this settings menu. Now, if you tapped on that button, the Play Store button, and you don't see what I see, that means that you have not installed, or excuse me, you have not signed into your Gmail account yet. In order to be able to download apps you do need to have a Gmail account signed into the phone. So again, if you don't see what I see, you probably see a white and blue screen and a pop-up that says, please sign into your Google account. If you have a Gmail, great, sign into it now. Simply enter your uh, Gmail, then your password, and then it should let you um, get to this screen after selecting a few more menu options. You will also see a option at the bottom of the screen that says create account. So if you don't have a Gmail, you'll need to select create an account and you'll need to follow the steps. And it's super fast to do this. Put in a first name, a last name, um, I think a birthday and your gender, and then you will select what your, you want your Gmail to be, your password, and then it should take you to this screen. So. That is just the process for those of you that don't see what we're seeing right now. Okay, so this is where you'll go to download applications and I wanna make this really easy for you. Um, if you already know what you wanna download, great. All you'll need to do is tap in the box at the top here that says search for apps. By tapping up there, the keyboard will pop up and you can either type in the name of the app that you're looking for. Let's say you want uh, a slot machine app, or you want Uber, you would simply type it in here and then hit the magnifying glass in the bottom right corner to search for that app. However, there is another method that's a lot cooler, and let me show you how to do that. So in the upper right corner, you'll find a little microphone. By tapping on that microphone, you can simply say the name of what you're looking for and it will automatically search for you without you having to type it in. Let's try it now. Uber. This also works great when you don't know the name of the app, but you know what it's called. Or excuse me, you, that's funny. You know the name, but you don't know how to spell it. You can simply say it and it will do a search for you. 
And just that easy, the Uber app has come up and I'm gonna tap this green install button so it'll actually download the app and save it to the phone. Now, sometimes when you search for an app, this green button does not say install. It will say a price. If it ever says a price, that means that it is not a free app, it is a paid app, and you will be required to add a credit card to your account to purchase that app before you download it. So be aware of that. I always say try to look for a free app first before uh, taking a paid app. You might find the same app out there, but it being free, okay? Now, while Uber is installing, I wanna show you a couple of things here. Um, in fact, actually, let's pause real quick. So look, Uber is finished downloading, and we know that because that green button has changed to an open button. So I can either tap open, and it will now take me right to the app, or let's tap our home button here. I'm gonna swipe up, and there is our Uber app right here. It's now in our app drawer section where you find all the apps installed on the phone. So once you download it, once again, you're gonna go to the home screen, swipe up, and that's where you'll find the app that we just downloaded. Now, let's go back to the Play Store. I wanna show you a few other things. And hey, I wanna go back one step, so I'm gonna use my back button right now, and that's gonna take me one step back, and now we're back on the main screen of the Play Store. Now, let's say you don't know what app you want. You just wanna see what apps are available and then select later. Well, up here you'll find categories. So for you, top charts, kids, and categories. You can go through here to help you search and kinda of see what's available. Maybe you say, I really want a health and fitness app. Well, you would go to that category and then you can scroll through apps that only fit in that uh, range. Back button again. You can also switch at the bottom here and go to the game section. You can go to offers and books. So these are just a few of the options that you have to help you navigate through the Play Store. Okay, let's hit our home button. We're all done with downloading apps. Next, I'm gonna go over how to control the volume and the sound settings on the phone. So for example, if you'd like to put the phone in vibrate or turn it on silent, here's how you do that. You're gonna tap on the volume up or volume down button. Either one will trigger this menu. One disclaimer, it is very quick. It's gonna pop up for about two seconds and it's gonna go away. So just be prepared for that. If you don't hit the button fast enough, you just have to go back and press it again. So tap, it's gonna bring up this menu here and then you can tap to the left of where it says ring. There's a little bell. So we wanna tap on this bell. So look, this is vibrate, this is silent. Tapping it again, we'll put it back on ring. And then here I can control the sound of how loud the phone is gonna ring. So if this is all the way to the right, it's gonna ring really loud. But if I drag it to the left, oh, see, it went away that fast. But the further left I drag it, the lower the sound will be. You can also tap on this arrow to the right to bring up your other media uh, sounds. So for example, you have media, which is the sound of a video or music playing, the ring, which is how loud the phone is going to ring, your alarm sound, and your notification sound, like when a text or when an email come through, how loud that'll be. So that's how you control all those settings, simply by tapping on volume up or the volume down button. And now we're gonna to transition to how do I make calls and how do I send text messages? Starting with how to make calls. So first, if you wanna make a call, you'll wanna tap on the green button in the bottom left corner, which is the phone button. And you'll tap on this blue button called the dialer to bring up the numbers and allow you to enter a phone number to call. So let's input a number now and let's try a test call. Okay, so we've entered a phone number, and now we're gonna tap the green button to start the call. If you'd like to put it on speaker, you can tap on the speaker button right here. Temperature is coming up. There we go. 
I can put the call on hold by tapping here. I can add someone to the call by tapping here. I can mute the call or even go back to the keypad here if it's an automated line that you have to select uh, from different prompts. When you're all done and you're ready to end the call, simply tap on the red phone button and that will end the call for you. Next, let's move on to how to answer the phone when someone calls you. So I'm gonna initiate a call so you can see what it looks like and you can see how to answer or decline. Okay, so our call is coming through. I can either tap the green button to answer or tap the red button to not answer it. I'm gonna tap the green button. Our call is now answered. I can tap here to again put it on speaker. All the other options apply. And when you're all done, hit the red button to end the call. Now, that's how a call looks if you are using the phone and the call comes through. But if I'm not using the phone, then it's gonna look a little different when it pops up on the screen. And that's what I wanna show you next. So let's initiate our second test call. And you can see what it looks like when the phone is off and a call comes through. Okay, so here's our call. I'm going to put my finger on the little phone button and I'm gonna drag it up the screen to answer like this. See, and if I wanna decline it, I would take my finger, put it on the phone, but this time I would drag down. So down to decline and up to answer. Here we go. There we go. So I dragged up, it has answered our call and we can end it. So those are the two things you'll need to know when the phone is off and a call comes through, you'll need to drag up to answer or drag down to decline. Now let's move on to how to send text messages. To send a text, you'll need to tap on the message button right next to the phone. So phone, text message. So, so far we have no messages in yet. If we want to start a new message, I'm gonna tap on the plus in the bottom right corner. Now I can either select from a contact that is saved on my phone from this list, or I can tap on the uh, keypad button to the right and I can enter a phone number for the first time. Let's put in a number now. Here's our number, I'm gonna tap on that contact. And now I can begin sending a message, hey, and hit the button to the right to send the message. Now also, we have a little paper clip to the left, which is the attachment button. Tapping this will allow you to attach a picture or video to the text message. So it defaults to the camera. So if I lift up here, it'll actually let me take a picture of something. So I would tap the white button to take a picture, hit the check to say I'm okay with that picture. It's gonna automatically attach it to that message and then I can hit the send button to send it off. Now you might have a picture already on the phone now to be able to send that, you tap on the uh, paper clip again, but you have to go over to the little uh, picture icon here. This will take you to your gallery and now I can select this picture here and let's say this picture so I can add two pictures and then hit the send button to send off the picture. And that's it. You can also go over to the microphone here and I can tap and hold to send a voice message. I can hold, say a few words, and it will send it as a voice file, which is pretty cool. And those are the basics of how to send a text message. Next, we're gonna go over how to sign into your email account. To do this, you'll wanna go to the Google folder, which should be on the home screen right here. If you don't see this folder here, you can always swipe up and you'll find the Google folder in the app drawer right here. We're gonna tap on the Gmail app. Now, some of you have Gmail, some of you don't. Well, guess what? We're gonna use Gmail anyway because you can sign into multiple email types using the Gmail app. We're gonna tap on add another email address 
And these are some of the options of the other accounts we can add to the phone. So a Google account, a Hotmail, Outlook, or Live, a Yahoo, an Exchange, or an Office 365. If you see your email type on this list, you'll want to select it and then enter your email address and the password. However, there are some cases where you have another email type. For example, an AOL or an SPCglobal.net. Well, to sign into those accounts, here's a trick to find an app that will work with those email types. Tap on the Play Store button on the home screen and we're going to hit the back button till we get to the main screen. Keep going, keep going. Okay, so we're back on the main screen. I'm gonna tap in the search. Now, tap on the number button in the bottom left corner, and then tap on the little A or the at symbol, and then you'll need to enter whatever your at is for your email. So for example, for AOL, it's just AOL. And then I'm gonna hit the search in the bottom right corner, the magnifying glass, and it will now search for apps that are compatible with AOL email addresses. And look right here, we have the AOL Direct app. I can tap and install this, and now I can use that app to sign to my AOL account. Now, maybe you don't have AOL. Maybe you have sbcglobal.net. That's a super popular email that was around um, a while ago, and a lot of people still have it. So I tapped in the box to bring up the keyboard. I'm gonna hit this little X and the little left arrow to backspace, and I'm gonna type in sbcglobal.net. And then I'm gonna search again and guess what? It's showing us that if we use the Yahoo Direct app, we can sign into that email type with that app. We also have a few other app recommendations that will also work with that email type. So this is the shortcut of how you find an app that will work with that email type. You'll wanna hit the install button to download it to the phone, and then go home, swipe up, and you'll find the app in the app drawer section where you can then go in and put in your information and see if it'll let you sign in. Here's our AOL app and our Yahoo app should be loading shortly. All right, and our final section, which is going to be how to take pictures and just kind of a basic run through of using the camera. We're gonna tap on the camera icon at the bottom of the screen. Now, this will open the camera and the first prompt it should give you is, do you wanna allow it access to your location? The reason for this is because um, there's a cool feature that will store all your pictures taken in certain places in folders. However, if you would prefer not to have your location saved every time you take a picture, simply tap don't allow. Okay, so we're in the camera here and it's gonna default to the camera setting and it's gonna default to the rear camera, which is the back camera. If you'd like to turn it around to see from the front camera, you'll tap on the button here. You can say hi to me. Hey, hey. You can tap this button again to rotate the camera the other way. Now, let's say I take a picture. You're gonna simply tap the button one time. If I wanna go back and see that picture, I'm gonna tap on the gallery button right here and guess what? Now I can see the last picture that I just took to see if I like it or if I wanna take another one. I'm gonna then tap on the screen, tap the back button to go back to the camera. Now, we also have a video option here, so by tapping on video, it'll take us to the camcorder and notice the button is red because tapping the button will have it start recording. And now it's recording a video. I can take a picture while the video is recording. I can pause the video if I want. I can zoom in. There's a little bubble here on the side. If I put my finger on the bubble and drag up, it will zoom in for me. And that detail is pretty crazy. Let's zoom out. And then I'm gonna tap the button in the center here to stop the video from recording. 
And then as you swipe over, you have a few other options. So a portrait video and a panoramic video, or excuse me, panoramic picture. So those are just some of the main settings. And if I tap on the menu button here, you'll see there's a few other cool options that are built into the phone. There is a stop motion, a light trace, and a super macro for really detailed up close pictures. So you have a couple of options there. Now, after you've taken a bunch of pictures, if you wanna go back and see all of them, you're gonna tap the home button, and then we'll want to swipe up and go to the gallery. The gallery is where you'll find all the pictures taken on the phone. You can find the gallery in the TCL folder right here. Just tap on this folder and then tap on gallery. And here we go. And now you can go through and look at all the pictures that we just took, including the video that we took, just like that. All right. And that is the camera in a nutshell. I hope you guys found this helpful. If it was helpful, do me a favor, leave me a comment down below and let me know if the video was helpful and let me know specifically what was the most helpful thing that I covered. And also, if there's something that I didn't cover that you would like to be covered in the future, leave it in the comment section down below. And if I get enough people comment, I will make sure to make a follow-up video going over how to do those things as well. I hope you guys found this helpful. If it was, hit that like button down below. If you're not already a subscriber, hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more videos. Take care and as always, have a good one.